plan in hand, it's time to get the demo out of the way. A tree service did come right before us and remove all of the trees and grind a bunch of the stumps. That meant we had to make sure we got those chips out and removed. We then paint the general layout of the space on the ground. This allows us to start excavating for our base and getting our fabric and our gravel in place. The base construction is the most important aspect of laying pavers. It's what's going to allow our pavers to be stable, sturdy, and not shift over time. After excavation, the first step is to install some fabric. Now I'm a little particular about the type of fabric we use. We don't just use any fabric. We're using a woven nylon base fabric, similar to what they use in road construction. While a normal geotextile fabric most likely would work, it does not give us long-term support. It doesn't break down over time, but it does not have the lateral support going on just two axes. A traditional geotextile fabric will just flex as the ground soil flexes. I like this woven fabric because if an issue does present itself, maybe in the next 15 years, say some moisture gets underneath or maybe some water is running where it shouldn't be, that fabric will actually span the gap for a while before there's any signs of wear to the actual paper patio. Enough about fabric. As you can see, we've already started laying pavers. The base construction is that fabric 57s, which is a clean aggregate uh, about 57 of an inch across, and then we scree out eights over top of these 57s. Might seem a little bit odd, but it works really well and gives us a very sturdy base that does not hold moisture. Another thing I love about open grade construction is you can work in all sorts of weather, whether it's raining, whether it is a mushy soil, it does not hold moisture. So we are able to work uh, right after a rainstorm as long as our base is intact and in place. One other thing I want you to notice is how our base is wider than the placement of our pavers. It might seem like a waste of gravel. It's just a cheap way to ensure that our pavers don't roll off the edge of our base if anybody drives a lawnmower or somehow gets a four-wheeler in the backyard. Who knows? I've seen things like this happen. Pretty crazy. Well, now it's time for Fish's birthday, so we're going to take a second and just hang out here. Enjoy this time lapse of us eating some cake and hanging out with the homeowner. <laughs> All right, so what we're about to do now is lay out the lights in the cab. So you can see he's measuring right now. He's using the saw to cut a channel in the top of the wall. And then our wire is gonna go through there. So we're using grease caps, laying out our wire and then laying the lights out. On this side of the patio, we are starting our fire pit construction. So if you notice, we laid all of our pavers out over the area where the fire pit was gonna go. And then we're now starting to cut the perimeter out and then start to stack the actual fire pit in place. One thing to note about the graphics wall is it goes in and out. So what we do is we pull out the ones that are all the same on the bottom course, lay those out so we can cut a perfect rectangle to build our fire pit. If you don't do that, now you end up having to stair step and make awkward cuts in order to get the fire pit to fit around the pavers. If you notice, we just took up our border that we already cut in and we're extending these pavers out and making some new cuts. After our initial fire pit construction, our homeowner came out and said, oh, we want it larger. We want a little bit more space. No problem. We just added some more base, a little bit more fabric under that base, of course. And now we're extending the pavers to fit the area. I love watching papers get laid. It's just something so satisfying about watching them just create a hard surface out of nothing. About time for us to start our wall construction. So what you can see Kevin is by the house cutting in where the exact wall placement is going to be into the existing pavers. The first course of wall block is arguably the most difficult because we need to get it leveled side to side and front to back. So it takes a little bit of time. We usually build up the gravel underneath just a little bit more than is necessary and then use a rubber mallet to hammer it down in place. I say rubber mallet, but it's really a, de a dead blow. So you can see that orange hammer there using the level, creating that first base. As soon as this first course is in place and you see he's rounding the corner now, it's time to start towards the back. So we'll start with the back 
and then we'll start with layers. So we don't usually just go one course at a time all the way around. We'll kind of build up layer by layer and you see how quickly now it's gone that that first course is in. Actually, the most difficult thing with this Techo Block graphics wall is mixing the colors, which Kevin isn't a huge fan of, but it's something that looks really cool because they wanted this geometric shape with the hexa pavers. They wanted also to see the onyx peppered in the wall. So we're using uh, three palettes to one palette, grade nickel mixed with onyx. Heavier on grade nickel, if you can't tell. <laughs> One of the fun aspects about this job is directly behind where the camera is sitting right now is the first hole for the golf course. So it's really cool. This whole space is designed so that it's inviting for the golfers on the golf course because they have a very active community and they like people coming over and hanging out with them. So even though we have this three quarter wall that's being built right now between the golf course and them, the way that it's laid out is it's laid long ways along the golf course. And it's just, it's fun to have that community aspect and with the crazy coloring of this fire pit area it stands out on the golf course i actually had a friend of mine who golfs at kiln creek all the time call me and said hey man i saw this really cool patio being built on the golf course you would love it it's just so crazy looking come to find out it was this patio that we're building right now at this point in the construction it's now time to get the lights in place so you can see kevin there sitting on the wall what he's doing is he's making the wire connections he's ground his channel into the top of the wall for our wire to run along it and then he's gonna use those grease caps and then cover the entire wall with these beautiful grade nickel raffinado caps Right before we glue these caps, we just like to make sure they're perfectly level. So you can see Kevin using a grinder just to make sure our caps sit nice and flush and perfect. All right, enough with Kevin building some hardscape. Let's get Jim involved in the landscape. Hey guys, welcome. My name is Jim with Eastern Outdoors, and right now we are walking onto a finished hardscape. Now that all the hardscape is done, we're just doing the damage control and beautification of, we're gonna be, uh, put, we just put this water feature in this morning, um, the two bowls, we're gonna have a couple lights in there. The water's really muddy right now. But that's okay, it'll clear up. We're gonna actually take some of that water out, refill it, put in some flocculant to coagulate some of the solids in the water. All that water's gonna then get clear, all the solids gonna drop out of it, it's gonna be beautiful. Over here, we're gonna grade this out, get us get us some uh, erosion mats, some seed, some grass growing here in a couple weeks, and then we're back on track to a beautiful yard and uh, a place where our customers can enjoy their own yard, get outside, and uh, with that, get outside, my friends. Well, that was kind of cheesy, but yeah, get outside, my friends. I don't know if you know, but Jim is my brother, so I like to make fun of him if I can. Well, he is building a double bowl set. So there's an aqua 45 basin in the ground here that we have covered with some cobble. And then we're using two bowls with an ultra 2000 pump uh, with the flex piping and then placing a few boulders around it just to naturalize it to the space and make it look like it's not just bowls sitting out by themselves. And then we moved this probably dead Japanese maple. Let me know down below in the comments. Please do give us a subscribe. That lets us know that you guys are enjoying our content. Eh, if you're not enjoying it, <laughs> don't subscribe, I guess. I'm Micah Miller. This is our channel, Easton Outdoors. I'll catch you guys next week.